Hello everyone, this is Anamika Solanki from Lok Bharati School. In this video, we will learn about the rational numbers in detail. We will discuss all the concepts of rational numbers so that whenever I will give you some task to do, you will be able to perform that task with ease. So now, let us begin. The name of the chapter is rational number. But before we discuss about rational number, let us do the quick revision of what you have learned in your lower classes. So the first is natural number. Do you remember about natural numbers? The numbers from 1, 2, 3 and so on are called the natural numbers. The next is whole numbers. What are whole numbers? All the natural numbers along with the number 0, that is 0, 1, 2 and 3 and so on, they are known as the whole numbers. The next is integers. These integers, they are the one which includes the negative numbers, the positive numbers and even 0. So, now let us know what is a rational number. The simplest definition of the rational number can be any number which can be expressed in the form p upon q is called a rational number. Now you will think that p upon q is a fractional number. Yes, it is a fractional number but it can also be said as the rational number. Here the denominator q can never be zero. Because any number, if it has been divided by 0, then it will become not defined. Let me give you one example of a rational number. Say 3 upon 9. Here, 3 upon 9 is a rational number and its denominator is a non-zero number. Let us take few more examples. Do you think 8 is a rational number? Yes, it is because 8 can be written as 8 upon 1. Right? And we can also have the negative rational number that is minus 2 upon 9 can also be a rational number and definitely 0 is also a rational number. Now, let us discuss the various properties which are applicable on the rational numbers. All the properties we are going to discuss on four proportions that is addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. Now, the first is the closure property. In that, let's discuss about the addition of the closure property. Now, what do you mean by the closure? Concentrate on my words what I'm trying to say. When we do any mathematical operation on any rational number and if we get the answer as the rational number, then we can say that number is a rational number and this rational number is closed under that particular operation. Are you getting it? Consider any two rational number A and B. If A plus B is also a rational number, then we can say that rational number is closed under addition. For example, let me take a very easy example. If we do addition of 4 upon 10 and 7 upon 10, then the answer will be 11 upon 10, which is a rational number. The next is subtraction. In the same way, if you subtract any two rational number, the obtained result will also be a rational number. Hence, we can say that rational number is closed under subtraction. You can see the example given here. And next is multiplication. Similarly, if any two rational numbers are multiplied and the obtained result is also a rational number, then we can say that Rational numbers are closed under multiplication. You can see the example on the screen, right? Let's move further. Next is division. This is not the same case with the division, right? Excluding zero, the collection of all the other rational numbers are closed under division. You can see the example on the screen. However, if A is a rational number and if it has been divided by 0, then it is not defined. That means it is not possible. For example, if 1 upon 2 it has been divided by 0, then the answer will be not defined. Hence, a rational number is not closed under the divisions. Now, students, we have discussed the closure property of the rational number. Now, 
I want you to hold the video over here and have a glance at the closer properties of the whole numbers followed by the integers. You have already learned it in the lower standards. This is just a quick revision. Yeah, it is for the closure property of integers. Now, complete this task on the basis of the explanations what we have learned till now. Next, this is the commutative property. What do you mean by commutative? It means it is related to the order of two numbers, right? Consider for any two rational numbers A and B. If we add A to B, then the obtained result will be same as adding B to A. That is, if A plus B, then its result is equal to B plus A. Hence, we can say that addition is commutative for rational numbers. Let us take one easy example over here. If I add 3 upon 5 to 4 upon 5, the answer is 7 upon 5. If I interchange it and if I am going to add 4 upon 5 to 3 upon 5, then also the answer is going to be 7 upon 5. Hence, the rational number can be added in any order. The answer will be same. Let us proceed further. Now, in the case of subtraction, for any two rational number A and B, a minus B is not equal to B minus A. Okay. So, I'll explain you uh, with some example. If you perform 1 upon 5 minus 3 upon 5, then the answer will be minus 2 upon 5. But when we perform 3 upon 5 minus 1 upon 5, we will get 2 upon 5. So, here it is minus 2 upon 5, which is a negative rational number. It is definitely not equal to 2 upon 5. Alright, that means both the answers are not same. Hence, we can see that subtraction is not commutative for rational numbers. I hope you are getting what I am trying to explain you over here regarding various properties. Now, just like addition, two rational numbers can be multiplied in any order and the obtained result will be same in the both the cases. That means if A is multiplied by B, then the same answer will be for B multiplied by A. You can see I have already given a very simple example over here. So just uh, pause your video and try to understand what is been explained over here, right? Hence we can see that multiplication is commutative for rational number. In division, just like subtraction, the answer of a two rational number A and B cannot be same if we are dividing in any order. You can see the example on the screen. Hence, we can say that division is not commutative for any rational number. Okay. Now, pause your screen and give a glance at the commutativity of a whole numbers followed by the integers. It is just like a revision of a previous standards. Fine. Now, this is for integers. Try to solve the blanks by taking some examples of the integers. Okay. Okay. Now, complete the task on the basis of the explanation till now. Hope you are enjoying the video and you are getting what I am trying to make you understand. Fine. So, the next is associative property. Now, concentrate on my words. What do you mean by associativity? Associativity it is the one which is related to grouping of the numbers. Let me explain you in detail. Consider any three numbers, say A, B and C. If A is added to the sum of B and C, then its result will be equal to the sum of A and B plus C. Take some rational number and try to justify this on your own in the same way how we have done for the previous properties. Hence, we can say that addition is associative for the rational number. Now, next is subtraction. This is not the case with subtraction. We cannot get the same result for the subtraction by grouping the numbers in the different way. You can see over here in the screen. Yeah, take some example and try to solve it. Hence, subtraction is not associative for the rational number. Now, the next is division. I think it is multiplication. Okay. So, just like addition, multiplication is associative for rational number. That is, if A is multiplied with the product of B and C 
or the product of A and B, it has been multiplied by C, then the result will be same in both the cases. Fine? Unlike multiplication, division is not associative to the rational numbers. Yeah? Now, pause your video here and have a look at the associativity of the whole numbers. You have already learned all these things in the lower standards. Fine? Now, this is associativity of the integers. Just have a glance at it. Pause the video over here. Think and complete this table with examples for each of them. Okay, let's proceed further. Yeah, next is distributive property for multiplication over addition and subtraction. Fine. Consider three rational numbers, say A, B and C. Here A is multiplied with B and then A is multiplied by C. Okay, now both these products are added. In simple words, we are distributing A to both the rational number B and C. It holds true for subtraction also. Let me give you an example. Concentrate on a screen over here. Here, 1 upon 2, it has been multiplied to 3 upon 4 first and then it has been multiplied to 5 upon 4. And whatever product is over here, it has been added like this. Fine. Next topic is additive inverse. Let us consider the rational number A upon B. Then its additive inverse will be minus A upon B. And if we are taking minus A upon B, then its additive inverse will be A upon B. From where all these things are coming? Yeah, let me explain you. If we add 2 upon 3 to minus 2 upon 3, then after solving, this is a very simple solution. After solving this, we will get a result as 0. Hence, we can say that 0 is the additive identity for rational number. Means if we are going to add 0 to any rational number, the number will be a rational number itself. Okay. You can see the another example also which has been given over here. Now, pause your screen here and solve the following questions based on the additive inverse. Okay. Now, our next topic is multiplicative inverse. Let us consider any rational number p upon q. Then its multiplicative inverse will be q upon p. How it is coming? Let me give you an example. If we multiply 8 upon 21 into 21 upon 8, then by cancellation over here, we will get the answer as 1. Hence, 1 is the multiplicative identity for the rational number. That means, if we multiply 1 to any rational number, then the rational number, we will get the answer as that particular rational number itself. Fine. One more example I will give you that if uh, we are going to write or we are going to find out the multiplicative inverse of 7 upon minus 5. So its multiplicative inverse will be minus 5 upon 7. It can also be said as the reciprocal of this particular number. All right. Now, pause your screen over here and solve the following questions based on the multiplicative inverse. Well, this was the last topic for today. I hope you have understood all the concepts of rational number, right? In the next video, we will discuss some more concepts of rational number. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay home, stay safe.